Greetings folks and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and Lovely. This week we will be reporting on the upcoming Maker Music Festival, which is very exciting, um, some cool things on crowd supply, some awesome projects, and of course the Mystery Box competition. So, without any further ado, let's get going. We'll be beginning this week's show with the Maker Music Festival, but first, a quick bit of housekeeping. If you aren't already subscribed to the Electromaker YouTube channel, consider doing so. Uh, being subscribed to this channel and clicking like on each show, which only takes a couple of seconds, are great ways of ensuring that YouTube know that people are enjoying this show, and therefore are more likely to uh, recommend it to like-minded people. The notification bell is an optional way that you can get notified when the show goes live. Now, I know that this can turn out to be quite spammy, but we only really put out one video per week on this channel and it is the Electromaker Show. If that ever changes, you can of course undo that at a later date. These three things are free and a great way to support the show. There's no obligation, but you'd be doing us quite a favour. Anyway, let's get on with the show. And up first we have the Maker Music Festival, which is a festival that usually takes place in California. It is, as you may guess from the title, people who are using their maker skills to create interesting musical instruments, modify existing instruments, and just do interesting things in that nice crossover between maker culture and music. Now if you know me and you know the show, you know I find this tremendously exciting. And while it is very sad that the changing state of the world means they cannot have an in-person physical meetup this year, it does mean that the rest of us get to attend the Maker Music Festival, albeit in a digital sense. Um, now, the page here uh, is more of uh, the landing page call to arms right now, but by the time that you're watching the show, if you go to the makermusicfestival.com website, you'll probably find there is a program ready. Um, and uh, indeed, uh, as well as lots of nice images which are quite inspiring here on a call to makers, if you will now go to their Instagram page and their Twitter page, both of which are linked at the bottom of this page, by the way, just down here, um, you will find that there is already actually um, a few very interesting previews about things that might be happening. Um, like, uh, for example, Lego construction, um, uh, tricks using a Makey Makey next week during the Maker Festival. And uh, uh, I'm sure all of you know this already, but Makey Makey was one of the first bigger well-known devices that used capacitive touch to trigger things. And one of the things you can do is, of course, make the obligatory synthesizer out of pieces of melon or banana. Um, and this looks like a very compelling and interesting thing. This is one of many things that will be happening over the weekend, and it is this weekend coming. It is the 15th and 16th, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, yes, uh, there's too much stuff here for me to go over, but if this image inspires you, if you feel like this looks like something that might you might be into, if you like the crossover of microcontrollers and music and all the crazy things you can do with it, this will be a fantastic virtual festival to attend, and by the time you're watching this, you can probably go and look at the program. I'll be there. I'm very excited about it. Moving over to Risk Five and a giveaway by Risk Five International. Now, the uh, open source architecture of Risk Five chips is something that people find very, very exciting. Um, this idea about being able to completely change an instruction set for, say, low power usage or very high throughput usage, and to also be able to do all of that without paying any licensing fees to people like Intel or ARM is, yeah, it's kind of exciting. Um, but getting started with it can be a little bit of a difficult thing. Um, it's not the cheapest thing to get started with, although there's some very cheap development boards out there. It's also pretty hard. And Risk Five International seem to know this, and for this reason, they're doing a giveaway to get more people into working with Risk Five. Uh, the idea behind it, they say, is to spur innovation and to get more and more people using Risk Five and get them used to the idea of Risk Five, as it were. And so, uh, yeah, here we have. Um, there are uh, a thousand boards up for grabs that you can uh, get for academia and early adopters by June 2022. Um, now, I, the way that this works right now is still rather vague. There's a Google form you can fill out, and of course you will need to be signed into a Google account, something that I am not, although you can still see in the background roughly what it says here. Um, and uh, you uh, can actually basically ask for, um, I believe, any Risk Five board that they link on their website. Um, this is the bit that I found a little bit difficult to understand. There is more information out there about it, and maybe you'll have more luck than I did. But I just wanted to kind of mention this, um, less to do with this specific giveaway, but just the fact that Risk Five International themselves are really trying to get this hardware out into the hands of people. It's a very exciting time. Um, and any of you who have actually worked, uh, you know, right down at the level of uh, chip architecture before, um, probably already understand how exciting Risk Five is. You're probably already fiddling with it. But if you've sort of been putting it off and wondering whether you should bother, um, if you have a nice idea or just a, an interest in it, um, this might be a good thing to enter. So I will leave a link to the blog on the Risk Five International website in the uh, description of this video, and that's where you can find this Google form that you can fill out. Um, it is worth noting that this is, of course, 
something that is limited. Uh, so by the time you see this, maybe they'll all have gone away already, um, but it's something certainly worth looking into if you were thinking, hmm, Risk Five. I wonder if I could do something with that. We've talked about the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 on the show quite a lot recently, and I think that's because uh, it's been out for a while and people are really starting to understand the power of having such a small unit with such a lot of uh, compute power in it. Um, and this has been put into a 3D printer mainboard, which I think is a fantastic idea, and there's a number of reasons why you might want to do that. So this is something that I saw on the Hackaday blog, and it is in fact documented on the uh, Hackaday site in general. Um, it is a project from PK Electronics, um, and uh, as you can see here, um, they have created a rather nice looking uh, board which fits a compute module into it and uses an STM32 chip. So it's still using the 32-bit microcontroller that you'll find in most 3D printer boards, but it is also putting the Raspberry Pi on board with it. Because you probably do use a Raspberry Pi with your 3D printer if you're using things like, for example, uh, example Octoprint, if you're using some kind of webcam to uh, track it, if you're using some kind of thermal imagery, which I know some people use on their uh, 3D printers as well. All very interesting things, and all things which are sort of still above my level of 3D printing. Although for friends I have that use 3D printing as part of the manufacturing for their business, these things are essential. So yes, having a compute module on board is a really nice way of doing it. Now, um, at present, this is something that PK Electronics have just made for themselves, although it is something that they are saying that they may well producing, they may well start producing the board commercially if there is interest. Um, so I will leave a link to the Hackaday blog page here. You can have a look at it and read up on it yourself, and you can also find the actual uh, um, project here too, um, and everything else you need to get in touch if this is something you would like to stick in your own printer one day. Moving on now to some funding website things. This is a section of the show where we look at things on funding websites. And we're starting on Crowd Supply with Couple Tag, which, as it mentioned, is a simple, small, low power, tap to read NFC tag that logs temperature and humidity. Now, there's a number of things about this that I find quite interesting. Not least that this is actually, in some ways, very simple. It is an incredibly low-powered um, microcontroller system that will just give you information via NFC, like I've already mentioned. The thing that I think is super interesting is that when you watch this video, you realize that um, this is a completely open framework, really, that could be used in many ways. Um, the data is passed as a URL, and then on the receiving end, um, it opens it up in a web page. No app needed, nothing like that, and graphs it. Um, and this is all done, I believe, using React or something like that. Um, it does mention further down the page. I'll just leave this video playing for just a moment. But yes, um, it is fully open source. And so uh, the board schematics are open source. But as it also mentions, um, the data is passed to and from the couple backend web application by couple frontend, which is written in React.js. Um, the firmware employs an encoder and couple codec to generate the tag URL. This is probably the bit that I find the most interesting. But anyway, this is pre-launch. I will leave a link to it in the description. And as always, you can sign up if you'd like to hear more about it. And we'll be coming back to couple tag, not least just because I think it's a very novel use of low-powered NFC technology, but because if these things are very cheap, this might be an interesting way of incorporating NFC into a kind of smart home setup in a way that we haven't really necessarily thought of doing before. Moving on to Pico DSP, which I will not spend much time on, but I'm very, very excited about. Um, this is an ESP32 powered audio synthesis board, and you can use it for all kinds of audio signal processing. Um, you can see the footprint of it here, and it's an ESP32 uh, chip, a regular ESP32, I think. Pico D4 processor, so yes, it's dual core. Um, you'll be able to shoot stuff off into different cores for timing purposes, which is, of course, very important. Um, and if you are at all interested in audio synthesis using microcontrollers, this is both a powerful microcontroller and a wireless one with Bluetooth capabilities. That is a lot of things in one that will make this super interesting. Um, I could go through all of the different uh, uh, specs for this, but rather than that, I would just suggest having a, a look at this page. As, the, uh, as I mentioned before, this is pre-launch. We don't know how much it's going to cost yet, and I'll probably go into all of those details when I come back to this board later when it launches, because I absolutely will. And our third pre-launch thing on Crowd Supply this week, we've gone all pre-launch this week for some reason, um, is Inkplate. Now, um, you, if you watch the show, you know that we are fans of Inkplate. Um, a very simple but actually very well put together implementation of using um, e-paper displays. In fact, for a while, I think they were literally using cast-off Kindle uh, e-paper displays that worked perfectly well but never found them their ways into official Kindles. And then attaching an ESP32 chip on the back along with some easy ways to actually talk to it. Um, these are a great way of setting up either a, a, a nice DIY project or just a stand in um, get weather from API and have it just as a nice piece of sort of digital practical art in your house. There's a lot you can do with these things. And they are bringing out another one, which is stepping things up again. 
The most notable changes to this particular ink plate is the resolution, which is now 1024 by 758 um, and the fact that it has a touch screen and a front light, um, which is basically putting it closer and closer to uh, your sort of paper white Kindle levels of stuff, but in a completely open and hackable user based board. Um, everything that Inkplate have put out so far I found super compelling. We actually gave away one of these Inkplate boards on the show a while ago, and I was somewhat sad to see it go. Um, and uh, uh, at, at some point in the future, I'm sure we will be getting back in touch with Inkplate to see if we can give away some more of these, because they are wonderful pieces of kit. I am a massive fan of what they do. Um, and needless to say, when this one goes live, I think I'll probably be one of the first on the list to buy one just for my own personal collection. Um, but yes, uh, I will make sure that there is a link to this in the description, as for the other two, and you can read about them and see if you would like to be updated. Um, most of the ones that we have had on the show today, I'm sure I will be coming back to when they go live to give you things like the full specs and how much they cost. But for now, that has been our funding website things. Yep, mystery box competition. The mystery box competition is very simple. It is a mystery box of things that have been given to us by the wonderful people at Mauser. Each week, I reach my hand in to pick out a prize and I pull something out. And this is from Silicon Labs. This is a... Oh, it's a sense board. So this is a Thunderboard Sense 2 board, but it's not in my hand because it is here down on the table. It is time for quality camera number two. Um, now, uh, this is a little development board for all things IoT. It has a bunch of sensors on board. It has a uh, temperature and humidity sensor. Wait, I've got the list here. A temperature and humidity sensor, a UV and ambient light sensor, a pressure sensor, an air quality sensor, a six-axis inertial sensor, microphone, along with LEDs and a Hall effect sensor. And I've probably been holding that out of frame the entire time. Moving over to the Thunderbird Sense2 Sensor to Cloud Advanced IoT Kit page on the Silicon Labs website. Um, you can see this is where I uh, had that list of the uh, different sensors that are on board. There's also a mobile app that goes with it. One of the things some people might find uh, interesting about that app is that you can uh, use it for viewing sensor data and also streaming sensor data to the cloud. Um, I haven't actually had my hands on uh, experience with this app, but I kind of feel like this might cut out um, uh, one element of development when you want to stream things, uh, you know, from a sensor to the cloud without having to roll your own system. I don't know. I guess the winner will have to find that out for themselves. Um, there are some great examples here as well. There are examples about how to use it with a Raspberry Pi, examples how to use it with a coffee machine, um, and there are a bunch of small videos that are taking you through each one of the different things that this can do, including motion tracking, the audio capabilities, which of course I find kind of interesting, and this one which is about the air quality sensor. So there's a bunch of different uh, things you can find about this, and of course you get the general uh, software and tools, uh, Simplicity Studio, um, along with the various technical documents if you want them. Our mystery box prize winners are chosen at random from the previous episode's comment section, and in this case, the winner is MR. Uh, so, congratulations. We'll be out. Uh, we'll be in touch with you to get this board out to you, and I really look forward to seeing what you come up with uh, with it. So, the mystery box competition will return. We'll also be doing some of those more specialized giveaways that I've done in weeks before. But for now, uh, let's get on with the rest of the show. We're going to close out this week's show with a few interesting projects I saw on the internet this week. And we are starting with an incredibly inventive but incredibly simple form of strain sensor. Now this is a video I saw on the Arduino subreddit, and I'm not going to lie, it kind of blew my mind a bit. Starting with just a piece of string that they cover with graphite from a pencil, you can see that they have uh, piece by piece put together something that uses the changes in resistance that comes with uh, graphite being stretched on, in a uh, string, and made it into something more and more complicated to the point that here you essentially have something that is logging uh, hand and feet movements in a 3D space. Um, there's not really much more to say about this other than that I just think that this is an incredibly inventive thing, taking a very simple idea and taking it to its logical conclusion, or at least not full conclusion, but something very, very smart. So I'll leave a link to it in the description. There's a bit more information in the uh, comments if you dig through them, um, but this video in and of itself is sort of amazing because it tells you everything you need to know to do it yourself. Staying on Reddit but moving over to the Raspberry Pi subreddit, this is an incredible collection of retro gaming devices, all using Raspberry Pis, all designed to look like they fit into retro devices. So um, here, uh, just to very quickly jump over them all, these are cassettes that have been designed to look like, well, cassettes, obviously, um, but would all have different forms of uh, uh, gaming systems in them or things that are useful for them. So here is a ZX Spectrum emulator within a cassette, a retro Pi cassette within a cassette, and this is a four port USB hub, joystick adapters, but they're all in retro looking devices. Um, I love these things as well. Uh, these stacks of discs are actually uh, little emulators in and of themselves. Um, and if I move through here, you will see... Um, let's find the one I'm looking at. 
Yeah, look, here are the stacks of disks that actually have computers inside them. They have little Raspberry Pi Zeros. Um, and I love this little screen as well. I, yeah, there's just so much about this that I love. I love the style of it. I love the inventiveness of it. Um, and uh, as it says, uh, they've been uh, building stealthy, unusual gaming system using various uh, Raspberry Pi models. And here's my collection so far. Um, so this is just a wonderful thing to look at. Um, and again, there's a little bit more information in the uh, comments if you'd like to go there. But yeah, look, look at this. Isn't that just a lovely thing to see? Moving over to the Electromaker website and a project from all parts combined, which combines parts. No, uh, no, this uses a Leap Motion, which is the hand tracking uh, device that you can get. It's a USB hand tracker, which gives you really high quality hand tracking um, and, and uses it with Unity to control an ESP8266 via the network to make this animatronic hand bend the fingers. And those bent fingers are all handmade out of bits of tubing. It's a really complicated project done in a really DIY way. Now the write-up goes through how the animatronic hand was built um, and as I mentioned it's really quite inventive. These bits of tubing were cut in just the right way so that when uh, they were pulled they would close each finger automatically. Uh, uh, sorry, individually is the word I'm looking for. Um, and uh, uh, in terms of the actual hand sensing, here's a, here's a quick diagram by the way. This is the ESP8266 going out to do all of the different servos and each one of these, just uh, when each servo pulls it will close a finger. Um, and as I said, one of the things about this that makes this super interesting is that it's controlled using real hand gestures. Um, here you see the uh, Unity package for the Leap Motion Controller. Uh, funnily enough, I am familiar with the Unity package because I've helped someone else debug their project. I don't actually own a Leap Motion Controller myself, um, but they are very, very impressive if you've ever uh, got to use one in any situation. Um, anyway, this uh, this is a fantastic project. I will link it in the description. There is also a video which goes through each step of it, um, which is definitely worth taking a look at because um, you can see the uh, finished product here. When there's a glove on it, it does not look like something made of cardboard and bits of tubes. It looks really, really quite cool. And finally this week, a project from the Electromaker Discord. Now, um, I've mentioned our Discord channel several times. There will be a link to it in the description of this video. Um, I'm already, we, our Discord is kind of young, it's not been going that long, but there's already people showing up and sharing their projects, which I think is absolutely fantastic. In the Show Off Projects channel, there's already a few different projects out here, um, although as you can see, it's very, very new. Here's the top. Um, but I thought this was lovely. Because this is a little uh, macro pad, and which uses an Arduino Pro Micro, and that's a fairly normal way of doing it. Uh, you use the Arduino Pro Micro because it's a US, uh, USB HID device by uh, standard. And um, uh, yeah, it's just what really drew me to this is how professional it looks. This looks way better than anything I've ever made. So this isn't a tutorial, although it doesn't need to be. This is the show off section of the website. And ultimately, uh, this is something that um, if you wanted to do, there are a huge amount of tutorials as to the actual technical side of how this is done. This is purely down to the way it has been put together that I found it fi uh, so fascinating. Um, and uh, there's a few nice things here as well, just sort of showing uh, that Tinkercad was used for the design and just a few nice images of it. I just thought it was worth mentioning because I'm really, really glad that people are now showing up to show off their projects in the Electromaker Discord, which, as I mentioned, has a link in the description of this video. Nat natural, natural advertising for our Discord right there. Yeah. That was the show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, thank you to all the people that are joining our Discord server to come and hang out there, and especially the people who are showing us support here on YouTube. It has not gone unnoticed, and thank you for taking the time to do things like subscribing and liking videos. It does make a big difference. Finally, if you are thinking of starting a project, have a look at the Electromaker shop. You might be able to find the things you need there, and that's a fantastic way of supporting the show directly financially. Um, but the most important thing is that you have a fun, creative, and safe week, and I will see you in the next show.